Hi everybody, welcome to Mike's Garage. Well, a couple of things have been happening, uh, makes the news. Um, I, I don't know if you all heard the bridge collapsed here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we really need some help with the bridges. Uh, I hope they don't spend all the money on uh, studying what needs to be done. We got to fix the bridges. So here's a couple photos of what happened. They're lucky nobody was killed. I think there was one of those extended buses and five cars on the bridge when it collapsed. So it's going to take a year or two to get that pulled out of there, taken all apart, and, and rebuild that bridge. So it's a terrible inconvenience. I hope they don't go around condemning other bridges in the city. It's going to make it impossible to get around without a bridge. We do have a lot of bridges here. But anyway, I digress. Listen, um, I wanted to address uh, TJ. Where are you, man? I haven't heard from you for a while. I hope you're okay. Get back to a Vietnam story here. I heard from Doug. Doug sent me an email about um, the, the drug use in Vietnam. It wasn't just marijuana. I, I, you know, I, I'll tell you honestly about that. There wasn't too many hard drugs where I was in headquarters company. There was a lot of officers around, and uh, you, know, you just didn't want to get in too much trouble with it. Not that they locked you up for it. They locked you up if you were trying to mail it home, uh, pounds of it home. Uh, and like I said in another story, guys used to do that. They would buy speakers, stereo speakers pack them with, with marijuana and try to mail it back home. Uh, they got caught. The people in the other end got caught. It just got ugly, okay? Well, anyway, so uh, what some of the guys used to do, uh, they would buy uh, a, a bag of marijuana, and uh, the cocaine came in little glass vials. It was about as round as a pencil and about two inches long, and it had a cap on the end, a glass cap and you just snapped off the glass cap. And what they used to do is they used to spread the marijuana out on a table and they would sprinkle like salt. They, they would sprinkle the cocaine onto the marijuana, mix it all around, and then they would roll their joints or some of them even tried to repack the cigarettes, okay? And, uh, and do it that way. So, you know, like the same thing that the South Vietnamese did, they, put a little bit of tobacco in with it so it didn't stink so much like marijuana. But most of the cigarette, 80% of the cigarette was, was um, cannabis with a sprinkling of cocaine, okay? So it had a little, what they used to call dust on it, all right? Um, and, and Doug mentioned that there was opium also, and there was. Uh, we didn't have any, at least I didn't know of any in our unit, but it was, uh, it was available, I mean, when you, get, when you send the military anywhere, what crops up around a military base is uh, strip joints, uh, drug use, uh, bars, and there's an awful lot of heavy alcohol use by some of the guys. I know a couple of the, uh, a couple of the guys would be shaking by the end of the day, and they had to go in, they had to get a shot or two shots, and then get a beer to wash it all down just to get back to normal because they were so wired and shaking at the end of the day that they had to have a shot or something like that it was crazy so you just stay away from all that stuff but yeah all that stuff was there doug um guys got in trouble with it we did have a couple duis that took place guys wrecked vehicles and uh, they were hidden uh that the guy was hidden so he wouldn't get in trouble and uh he was either high or drunk drunk uh one of those things uh, don't get me wrong it wasn't wasn't everybody, but it was uh, quite a few people that uh, smoked marijuana casually. There was even fewer people that were hard drug users. Uh, the cocaine, especially what I knew of, okay? And uh, Doug said they used to put opium in tea and they would drink that and that would just knock you out. And, and a lot of guys were using that for a good night's sleep. Uh, no dose, who knew? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what's in no dose, I really don't know. But uh, there are some of the things that went on over there. Uh, it, it was stateside, too. I mean, uh, you could get marijuana in Fort Benning, Fort Bragg. Uh, there were bars all over the place. Uh, you were allowed to drink when you were 18, but you had to drink the 2% beer, which is now known as late beer. So we could have access to that when we were 18. And uh, like I say, cigarettes were cheap. There was no tax. I think we were paying like $0.08 cents a pack or $0.10 cents a pack for cigarettes. So... All those vices were readily available and they were heavily used. So uh, that's, that's 
the way the military goes. Uh, I'm not really sure. I, I would have to venture a guess and say it's still prevalent in the military today. If you're out there and you know what's going on, send me an email. Uh, send me a comment. Uh, I'd be glad to hear from you. Uh, it's uh, Mike's Garage 2368 at gmail.com. Send me your story about what you witnessed in, uh, it doesn't have to, it has to be in Korea, if it can be in Afghanistan, Iraq. Let me know what you're seeing out there in the military today. I know there's a couple guys, it was an interview I did with a drone pilot, and uh, there was zero tolerance for any of that where he was, but it was all always available. So, hope you enjoy that. Um, it's just kind of a sad story about what goes on, but it's the truth. All right, guys. See you later. Thanks for watching Mike's Garage. Don't forget to give me a like, and I could always use more subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you listening. All right, bye now.